Motion lighting, great stuff, right? Till it don't work. In this case, this one just won't turn off. This particular unit's had a fairly easy life. It's got a couple of LEDs, as you can see, and it's been inside the garage. I've got it set up, of course, and I drive the car in. It illuminates the whole garage. I happened to notice that uh, I parked the car, went inside, had to come back out, get something out of the car, and the light was still on. So that's it. Uh-oh, things ain't right. So I pulled the unit off the wall, and I'm going to get ready and take it apart and see what I got. Since I got to take everything off, the first step is to go ahead and mark everything so I can put it right back like it was once I get it fixed. The next step is to carefully take a look at all the wiring so you make sure you know how it was wired up so you can put it right back. In this case, the red wire is the wire to the lights. The black wire is the hot wire, and the white wire, of course, is neutral. This particular unit, as you can see, is a Heath Zenith. It's a very nice unit. Got a few more adjustments than I actually need, but it's been performing virtually flawlessly up till right now. I went ahead and pulled the four screws out of the back of the unit. As you can see here, it's sitting slightly ajar. In this particular unit, there were two slight gotchas. The first one, of course, is the adjustment little knob. It has to be kind of plucked out before the board slides out. The second gotcha is a little LED on the front that indicates when the unit is triggered. In this case, yep, I broke the wires on mine. had to solder them both back. And here's the unit with both the little boards pulled out of the case. Now it's time for what you've all been watching for, the actual fix. In this case, these little units seem to always fail in the same place, the switches. I don't know if the switches are actually oxidizing or they're greased and the grease is drying up or what's going on, but in essence, you really have to clean the switch on the inside of the switch. In this particular case, a little bit of WD-40 and then sliding the switches back and forward several times cleared the situation up and that stopped the unit from uh, staying on all the time. Well, yeah, but did you fix it? Okay, I took the unit into the bathroom, one downstairs where I could turn off all the lights and make sure it was a complete dark environment. Set the unit up, and then now I'm going to test trigger and see what's going on. In this case, I'm using an old 20-watt incandescent bulb to avoid blinding me or the camera, just to let the unit turn it on and turn it off. The first trigger cycle, it took multiple triggers to get the light turned on. The second trigger cycle, it only took one to get it to light right back up. After I triggered it the first time, I left the bathroom, closed the door, and waited on the lamp to turn back off. Then I went in and re-triggered it for the second time. As you can see, the second cycle proceeded without any hitches. It turned right back off, right back on, and then turned right back off again. So I'm going to consider this one fixed. Go ahead and put it back in the garage and call this another completed project. If you're liking what you're seeing, uh, give me a like and consider subscribing. I just might have something else coming down here real soon. You're going to want to see. The king in the video just might be gone, but don't let that be you too. So come on back and see me real soon.